in the name of Jesus, great is thy faithfulness. Oh Lord, my Father, there is no shadow of turning within. Thy change at all, the compassion they fail not. As thou wilt be forever. We sing, great is thy faithfulness, O oh Lord, my Father. There is no shadows of turning within. Thy change at not, thy compassion fail not, as thou wilt be forever. We sing, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. <laughs> morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, the hands have provided. Great is your faithfulness. Lord on to hey we sing great is thy faithfulness great is your faithfulness morning by morning hey new mercies new mercies I see hey Lapa all I have needed thy hands have provided Faithfulness, ha, ha, ha. Lord, on you. We sing, great is thy faithfulness. Hey! Great is your faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies, new grace, ha, new favor, new ashes. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Faithfulness, Lord, unto. Sometimes when when we sit down and begin to analyze uh, and, and we think about the goodness of God, we we literally focus on the money and the materiality. But I came this morning to tell somebody that the life that you have is is more than worth. There are so many people that have acquired so many wealth so many riches and yet still they cannot move from one point to the other but as for you and i we are able to move to and from we are able to sleep and get awake we are able to eat and drink we are able to even pee and use the restroom there are people that can when they want to ease themselves there is a pipe connected to their womb before they can ease but as for you, you walk and go to the restroom, use the restroom and come back. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, I is provided. Great is thy faithfulness. We sing great is thy faithfulness. Singing unto him morning by morning. Your traveling mercy is so called. Your provision is your healing power. Oh Lord, your provision is and your healing power. Makata ya bata para bara. And so we want to pray this morning. I want you to connect your faith to my faith. There is a saying that faith makes all things possible. Love makes all things easy. And hope makes things work. And so this morning I want you to connect your faith to my faith and your love to my love and your hope to my hope that all things will work together for us and so this morning you want to pray i want you to commit yourself before the lord 
and tell God that whatever that the enemy has propelled against your life whatever that the enemy has set ahead of you that you might not know that they are looking for you to fall into a victim may the lord raise a standard the bible says and david stood and prayed that let ahithophel's counsel be foolishness in your sight and the bible says and having heard david and ahithophel's counsel got foolishness and the bible says after he counsel after his counsel was foolishness in the side of the advisors he went and hung himself and so we are praying that any plans uh, that the enemy has set against us uh, against our family against this church uh, may it be foolishness in the sight of god in the mighty name of jesus open your mouth and let's pray you are our source of refuge you are our hiding place and your word says you protect us from all evil and so this morning we've come oh lord we've come oh lord we've come oh lord not as a lord but with our entire family with our entire church with our entire oh lord everyone praying oh god that whatever that the enemy has plotted against us against our children against our wives against our husbands against the church against the leaders of this church against the elders against the deacons against the thicknesses against the women ministry against the men ministry against the youth and pensa against the children ministry oh lord may their counsel be foolishness in your sight in the mighty name of jesus oh lord how excellent is your name thou sovereign god says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers them all and so we are praying again for god's church i don't know what you are going through i don't know what our members are going through but one thing that we do believe is our prayer it doesn't matter where they are they might be here present with us they might be outside somewhere but one thing that we know 
that when we stand and pray our prayer will reach out to them wherever they are and so we are praying this morning that any plotter the bible says the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous the bible says the enemy cometh not but to come and steal to kill and to destroy and so any plans that the enemy is doing to steal somebody to snatch somebody from us in the name of jesus we have month of october november december to go and climb as a run up this year but one thing that we are praying eh, we are soaking every member of god's church uh, into the hands of god that if the enemy is plotting against uh, against somebody's life may the lord deliver them all whatever you open your mouth and pray we pray oh lord for protection upon your church in the name of Jesus, Hey, from the leaders of this church to a very bottom member of this church, from the elders of this church to the very Lord in front of this church, we all pray for the protection. In the name of Jesus, your word says, as mountains have surrounded Jerusalem. So your protection upon your people and so we pray this morning the lord god almighty let their grace let their grace be sufficient unto your people in the name of jesus Maya 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 ma Rosso kotonta Liya bala 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 ma Reka paya dada zendere Liya maya dada bala 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 ma Liya bala 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 ma Liya bala 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 ma In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus The Bible says Every year Hannah was going to Shiloh with her husband and her arrival but until one day when Anna did go to Shiloh the Bible says he set everything aside and went and had an encounter with God I don't know the number of times that you've been coming to church but this morning may you lay aside every weight every negativity every stress and say that I want to have an encounter with God this morning just as Anna did have an encounter with God and his destiny got changed and had somewhere may you also have an encounter with God this morning and have whatever your heart desire is and so we are praying the Lord I did not come here to meet my pastor neither did I come over here to meet the elders neither did I come over here to entertain myself with with a choir song but I came to have an encounter with you and so Lord let me see you may I see you oh Lord may I see you this morning may I see you through our worship through our praises through the word our comfort through our giving through our benediction in the name of Jesus open your mouth and pray that I may know him and the power of his resurrection open your mouth and let's pray that you have an encounter with God this morning we are before you this morning and one thing that we've come for is to have an encounter with you oh god in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus, have your way, 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 have your way. In the name of Jesus, we did not come over here, Father oh God, to see anybody, but we came here to have an encounter with you. And so, Holy Ghost, have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Maya Baya 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 Baya
Masikatera ba. Holy word. Long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient word in power. We sing holy words. Long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient word. Ancient words ever truth changing me and changing hey kapa we have hey we do pin hat hara bada bada ba oh let ancient word hey oh word ancient This morning we just want to thank you oh God just want to give you all the glory as we prayed unto you oh God as we prayed unto you as we prayed unto you as we prayed unto you as we prayed unto you, prayed unto you. may your kingdom come may your glory descend may your grace impact upon us may that Asian words impact upon us and may we receive your glory before we depart from your presence this morning have your way in the midst of your people this morning oh God and let us see oh Lord God over and have an encounter with you we thank you for your presence we give you all the glory in Jesus name Amen God bless you Welcome. 
where Christ is at the center of what we do. We are excited to have you join us in person and online. It is our prayer that you will be encouraged, revived, and restored as we worship together. God bless you. Oh, hallelujah! Amen. Oh, people of God, hallelujah! Amen. Amen. Amen! We welcome you once again to the presence of God. And we welcome our brethren that are watching virtually. God bless you wherever you are. One thing we know that in the realm of the spirit, there's no distance. So you may not be physically present but do everything in the spirit with us if we sing and sing with us if we clap and clap with us if we dance and dance with us amen. amen if you can please be on your feet and just give a clapping hand unto god if you know god has been good to you just clap your hands and praise his name and give a shout unto his name for if it has not been the lord on our side let the eyes of you see so this morning if it has not the lord that has given us the strength let the eyes of you see say it for our god is forever good he's been glorious he's been gracious he's seen us through our ways sometimes we may have our own definition of all good things but in times of bad in times of good our god is good he's ever faithful so this morning just lose yourself as you are in his presence be ready to sing be ready to clap be ready to check yourself to the glory of god hallelujah amen, amen.
If you know our God deserves all the praise for His goodness, if you know He deserves all our praise for His blessings, you know sometimes we underestimate some things that God gives us, and most of the times we don't see it physically. So we may see that God is not doing anything in our life because most of our pray prayers that we pray are towards ourselves. But God is doing a lot behind the scenes. That's why whenever we have the opportunity, we need to give him all the praise and the worship that he deserves. Do I have worshipers in the house? Do I have worshipers in the house? Come on, lift up your voice and bless the name of God. Oh yes, oh Lord, oh Lord, we magnify your name, we bless your name. You are God, you are the Elohim, oh God. Faithful are you, oh God, and faithful are your words. You are wonderful, oh God. There is no one like you, oh God. You are the God of heaven, you are the God of peace. You are the God of peace. I know we don't see what God and this morning worship. In the beauty of calling us, oh Lord, we read hallelujah to your name. You are the King of Kings, you are the Lord of Lords. We bow before your majesty with worship, O God.
like you like me. Praise to you, Lord. 
Oh, mama, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it. Hallelujah in highest praise, oh God. We sing unto your name, oh God. We sing unto your name, oh God. Your praise is so loud. Oh, worship, oh God. Hey, mama, sing it, sing it, sing it. We give you praise. You are bound in your wisdom, oh God. You are immortal, invisible God. You are the only wise God. You are great and you are greatly to be praised. El Shaddai Elohim. We exalt your name. We exalt your name, O oh God. We honor you, King of Glory. We bow before you, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God. We exalt you. So, our King and our Lord, we lift up our worship, we lift up praises unto your name. Because only you are worthy to deserve it. Only you are worthy, O oh God, to receive our worship, to receive our praises, O oh God. Lord, we lift your name. We sing hallelujah in the highest praise. You've proven over and over in our lives about your faithfulness, O oh God. You are holy, you are righteous, you are wonderful, you are excellent. I call you a God of well done. Because whatsoever you do it, O oh God, you do it to perfection. So you are a God of perfection. Father, this morning. We exalt your name. We honor you, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. And let the people of God shout a big amen. It's time for Sunday school, so grab your bag, notebooks, and pens and head on over to Sunday school. residing district pastor of the Dallas district. He is a man of passion and with a great zeal for the work of God. Beloved, without a further ado, let's humbly invite Reverend Kwame Ofori Amalfo to give us the word for today. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, I said praise the Lord. We want to thank God for our lives. We want to bless His holy name for making it possible for us to be in His presence. Amen. Our God is faithful. How many of us believe that God is faithful? Yes. Your presence here this morning is a proof that our God is faithful. Because I quite remember last week, we were all here before we left for our various homes. I charge you to pray to Him. And by God's grace, we prayed asking him for divine protection so that through his help you and I can come and meet with him once again today and this is where we find ourselves Ebenezer this is how far he has brought us hallelujah so it tells you and that our God is faithful so I want to say Lord thank you amen again I want to bless you for coming to church this morning yeah there are so many things you could have done when you woke up but you make a very good decision to come before the presence of God. And therefore, I say, God bless you. Amen. It is my prayer that God will meet you at the point of your need before you leave this place. 
I don't know how the service is here. The Holy Spirit will lead us. But I want to believe, I want to trust that God through the, through the service uh, will be a blessing to you. Amen. Oh, I said amen. Let me see by a show of hands those who were here last week because we are continuing from what we left off. Oh, if you were here last week, let me see your hand, please. Okay, if you missed last week's service, please let me see your hand. So I will know what to do. Okay, some few of us. Okay, thank you so much. We, we said that this month, the month of September, have been set aside uh, for us to discuss, to teach, and then to pray for families and then marriages. Hallelujah. So it is a month of uh, marriage and family enhancement or enrichment. So this is what we are doing throughout the month. So last week we started talking about how God himself uh, instituted marriage. We realize that marriage comes before family. And therefore we said we want to spend a uh, want to start from uh, marriage before we zoom into family. Hallelujah. So we spent time talking about how God himself is dead marriage in the garden of Aden. Hallelujah. We realized that it, was, it wasn't man's idea, but rather it was God's idea. Because he was the first person to see that it is not good for man to be alone. Hallelujah. And I said, whenever God sees something that is not good, you will make sure it becomes good. Amen. And therefore, he said, it's not good for a man to be alone. And therefore, I will provide a suitable helper for man. Hallelujah. The emphasis is in the word suitable. Not any other, uh, any other thing, but suitable. So because of that, God created man, a woman for a man. So I want all the women here to understand. The women were created because of man hallelujah don't take offense amen so you are created for man hallelujah so we study or we learn how god instituted marriage so we saw the how and we also learned the reasons why marriage were marriage was instituted the how we learn how god was able to put man to sleep and he took one of the rays from the side. And out of that, he fashioned it into a woman. So God is wonderful. Just one rib can make a woman. Hallelujah. So women need to be very grateful to men. For donating their rib to God so that you can become a woman. Hallelujah. And somebody donates an organ to you so that you can live. You will be forever grateful to that particular person. And therefore, women should thank men so much. For allowing or donating one of my rape so that you can become a living being. Hallelujah. Oh, me, men are good. Yeah, we are we are always donating. Amen. We are good. Amen. So that's how uh, marriage was instituted. Just one rape, fashioned into a woman. The God joined them together to become husband and wife. Amen. So, and then the reason is that be fruitful and then multiply. Amen. So, in the interest of time, let me proceed because I don't have too much time at my that this morning. So, this morning uh, we said, okay, let me say this is very, very important to me. That he said, because the woman came out from the side of every man, you're supposed to be, this is your place. Always be on the side of man. Hallelujah. Don't go ahead of him. Don't stay behind him. Be here so that I can enjoy, you can enjoy the protection of your woman. When I, when I stretch for my hand, I can give you the protection. When you are behind me, I don't know what's going on. If you are ahead of me, you are assuming the role of a leader. God has not made you a leader. Hallelujah. Women are supposed to submit their husbands. And men are being compelled to love their wives. Amen. So I think another time we will talk about this. But this morning we want to discuss this because wherever I go, especially when I have meetings with the single people, 
the question they were asking me how do I find Mr. Wright or Miss Wright? Hallelujah. This is a very important question bordering the minds of the singles in our midst. So this morning, I will try with the, with the help of the Holy Spirit uh, to be able to maybe give you some biblical advice. And uh, I'm praying that you receive them and then put them to practice. And soon and very soon, you'll find Mr. Wright and the Miss Wright. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So, main test once again, Genesis chapter 2. Uh, 18 and then 21 to 40, uh, 21 to 24. If you can project that for me, please. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, and then 21 to 24. So, thank you so much. 21 says, No, if you can, yeah, 18. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Amen. Then 21. 21 to 24 says, uh -huh, 21 to 24 said, The Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at a place, at that place. And then the, the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken for the man and brought her to the man. Uh -huh. Then 23 said, The man said, the man said, wow, this mine addition. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because he was taken out of man. And then finally 24, for this reason, for the reason of marriage, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Amen. So two people coming together, instead of making two, they become one. All because the very rib that was taken from man has come back to where it belonged to, and therefore it doesn't add anything. Amen. So I always tell people that your wife is you. Your wife is you. So sometimes I don't understand how some men are able to beat their wives. Maybe this is not working correctly. Hallelujah. Because you cannot be slapping yourself. How much was if you have, if you beat your wife? It's like beating yourself. Then this thing is not working properly. Hallelujah. That is why he who loves himself, he loves his wife, loves himself. Because your wife is you. Amen. Oh, I said amen. So we want to find out how, how to identify Mr. Wright, Miss Wright. Amen. So we have come to understand that the, it is God himself God himself who know how to bring a man and a woman together to join them together as husband and wife. Listen to me very carefully because people are trying to redefine marriage these days. Marriage is between a man and a woman. So same sex, same sex marriage is abominable in the sight of God. Hallelujah. It should not be encouraged. It should not be entertained, especially if you call yourself a child of God. Amen. Amen. God saw that it was not good for a man to be alone. God could have created another man for the man. But he brought Eve to man, not Steve to Adam. Hallelujah. So Adam and Eve, and not Adam and Steve. Hallelujah. So if you want to marry... If somebody wants to propose to you, ask the person, are you biologically a man? Uh -huh. Biologically. Likewise, ask the ladies, my sister, be sincere and be frank with me. Be genuine with me. Are you biologically a woman? Hallelujah. So I want, because I don't want to do anything which is, a, which is an, a, it's an abomination in the sight of God. So, marriage is always between a man and a woman. Hallelujah. Amen. So it is only God who knows how to do it. Bringing a man and a woman together so that they can become husband and wife. So if this is so, when you want to marry, you have to go to the person or the man, God, who knows how to do it and do it best. Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. 
So, God to God. Because he has done it before. He saw that it wasn't good for Adam to be alone. God was able to provide a wife for Adam. And therefore, if you are looking for a wife, you are looking for a husband, the best person to go to is God himself. Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. He has done it before. And likewise, he can also do it for you. Amen. So, one, you need to know the God that you are worshipping. That he is able to bring you a woman, to bring you a man, so you can have that person as a wife or as a husband. Don't bypass God. Yes, people can do well by recommending people to you. But the best person to give you the best is God himself. So number one, my sister, my brother, if you are praying, if you are waiting on God for a husband and for a wife, continue to wait on him. Because he can do it and he will do it for you. Amen. Then number two, if you know the God that you are serving, you know your God is a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. It is one thing knowing God and another thing praying to him. Hallelujah. Some Christians don't pray. It's true. Some Christians don't pray. But others know their God and they also pray to him. So you cannot take prayer out of the equation. Learn how to pray. And God, who is a prayer answering God, will answer your prayer. Amen. Oh, I said amen. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 says what? Ask and it shall be given. Uh -huh. Seek and you shall find. Then knock. It will be what? Open to you. Ask. I think I don't know if I've told you this story before. This young man, good Christian, looking for a wife. And then he was going to somewhere. He joined a taxi and he saw a very beautiful lady in the car. And then this, the, the, the lady was very beautiful indeed. indeed. And this, man, ah, this woman can be my wife. Hallelujah. And then the lady somewhere, somehow was able to interpret the body language of the man. That this man, the, uh, the way he is behaving, probably he has shown interest in me. So ladies are also wonderful. They have a way of decoding the, the way men behave. Hallelujah. And they will also have a way of responding to the advances of a man. So this man was looking at a man. He said, you look at his, at his face. And he said, Matthew 7, 7. Matthew 7, 7. Matthew 7, 7. And then the other guy makes any move. The lady will say, Matthew 7, 7. But uh, it, it was those days. We didn't have the uh, Bible on our phones. And therefore, this guy didn't have the Bible with him readily. So when he went home, he grabbed the Bible and he opened Matthew 7. The Matthew chapter 7, chapter 7 verse 7. And he said, ask. And it will be given. So, wow. I missed a chance. <laughs> so the lady was there, ask. It will be given to you. But meanwhile, this guy doesn't read his Bible. Make sure you read your Bible. Hallelujah. Because all your answers to your problems can be found in the Bible. When you ask, God said, it will be given to you. If you make a decision not to ask, nothing will be given to you. So if you want a husband, you want a wife, ask God. Hallelujah. Learn Matthew 7, 7. Amen. Then again, people pray, but they don't believe the God they are praying to. You agree with me that? So you don't believe in God. Oh, God exists. Yeah, well, okay, let me pray to him. But they don't believe what they are saying to God in their prayers. So number three, believe what we say. Hallelujah. Know the God that you are saving. I praise that our God is faithful. And therefore, when you pray to him, he will answer your prayer. So believe. That I'm asking for a husband. I'm, I'm, I'm praying for a wife. And God will supply me or provide a wife or a husband for me. Matthew chapter 7 once again. 9 through 11. Let's go there. Matthew 7. 
Matthew 7, 9 through 11. Mm -hmm. Said, you parents. Okay, let me go my, my page. My. Oh, what a man is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf, you give him a stone? Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a stick, will he? If then, if you then, being evil, know how to, good, how to give good gifts to your, to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? Hallelujah. Even we evil people, we know how to give good things to our children. Hallelujah. How much more? So if you go together and you ask him for a wife, God will provide you a wife. Not just a wife, but rather a good and suitable wife. Hallelujah. We want to believe this. The God that you are serving is good God. And therefore, he will only give you good things, even things beyond your comprehension. Amen. So that's Matthew chapter 7, 9 to 11. Again, if you want to read James chapter 1, 17, James 1, 17 says, James 1, 17, James 1, 17 says, um, every good thing given and every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the father of lies, with whom there is no variation or shifting uh, shadow. It means that God always is the giver of all good gifts. And a husband or a wife is a gift from God. Hallelujah. So when you ask him, he will give you the perfect one. Amen. Then again, uh, the same, uh, just to emphasize how good our God is. Psalm 37 verse 7 says, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires, the desires of your heart. Hallelujah. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desire of your heart. Of your heart. So when we ask him, God will give you what you, you are desiring in your heart. Then finally, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10 says, For God is not unjust. So as to forget your work or the love that you have shown unto his name. Now, in having ministered and still ministering to the saints. God is not unjust. God is a rewarder. Hallelujah. So whatever that you are doing in his house, God sees everything. Whatever that you are doing to promote uh, the good of this church. Whatever that you are doing to expand the kingdom of God. God sees everything. And therefore he will reward you. He's not unjust. Amen. Oh, I said amen. So if you are singing the choir, keep on singing. Those of us who are playing the instrument, doing whatever you are doing. If you are an officer of the church, play your role very, your, your role very well. If you are a pastor, do your work as a pastor and do it well. For God is a rewarder. Amen. He sees everything and then because he's not unjust, but rather a just God, he will reward you accordingly. He will give you the desire of your heart. You will, look, you will give you the man or the woman that you are looking for. Amen. I've worked with this God and I know what I'm saying. That God is faithful and is not unjust. Amen. Oh, I said amen. So, three, uh, so far, number one, I said, you need to know it's only God who can bring a husband and a wife into your life. If it is so, then pray to him. Number three, when you are praying, Believe what you are praying. Amen. And then number four. Watch. You pray and you also do what? You watch. Uh -huh. If you read Genesis chapter 24, 1 to 4, Abraham was given a charge to his head servant that he should go back to Mesopotamia, their homeland, their village, and look for a wife for his son Isaac. He didn't want Isaac to marry of the Canaanite woman because they had a covenant with God. Hallelujah. So he sent this uh, servant to go back to my homeland, which he didn't know. But God, through his own 
a divine way was able to send a guy to this place so let's quickly read that so that i will emphasize the watchfulness aspect of uh of your of your effort uh, to look for a husband and to look for your wife so genesis chapter 24 1 through 4 please genesis 24 1 through 4 okay now abraham was old advanced in age and the lord had blessed abraham in every way uh-huh and then abraham said to his servant the oldest of his household who had who had charge of all that he owned please place your hand under my thigh and i will make you swear by the lord the god of heaven and the god of earth that you shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the canaanites among whom i live mm -hmm. Paul says, but you will go to my country and to my relatives and take a wife for my son Isaac. Then 12 to 14. 12 to 14, the same chapter, please. 12 to 14. Yes. Then he said, Oh Lord, this is the servant. After he had left Abraham, gone to the place that he was supposed to go, and then this is the servant also praying to god hallelujah because he has been charged to go and look for a wife meanwhile he had no idea of the place about a woman nothing so he, this guy had to depend on the god of abraham because he knew the god of abraham was a good god hallelujah somebody a god that he can depend or trust uh, put their trust in so this man is her, her servant began to pray and this is his prayer he said, Oh Lord, the God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show loving kindness to my master Abraham. Mm -hmm. Behold, uh, he said, Behold, I am standing by the spring. And the daughters of the men of the city are coming to draw water. Mm -hmm. 14 says now may it be that the girl to whom i say please let me draw your jar so that i may drink and who answers drink and i water your comments also may she may she be the one whom I, you have appointed for your servant isaac and by this i will know that you have shown loving kindness to my master amen so he prayed to god God help me. I want to grant me success in this journey that I've been back on because I've been charged to look for a wife. Meanwhile, Isaac was sitting somewhere, but somebody was looking was going to look for a wife for him. Then, uh, in the interest of time, let's read verse number 21. Uh, verse number 21 says, Yes, the same chapter, please. Meanwhile, the man was gazing. If you look, other versions said he was watching. New Living Translation and the new NIV said he was watching, he was watching her in silence because the lady was doing something. And this man, after he had prayed, decided to do what? To watch. So whilst he was watching in silence to know whether the God had made his journey successful or not. So he watched, he prayed, and he watched. Uh -huh. So I want to charge you. Some of you know the guy who have a father in heaven. And you are always looking up there. Praying unto him. Praying unto God in heaven. To supply you or provide you a wife or a husband. But meanwhile, there's no marriage in heaven. And therefore, there are no single men and single women in heaven. They are all where? Down here. But meanwhile, from January up to September, always looking at heaven and praying and praying and you see only angels meanwhile angels don't marry hallelujah it's about time for you to look down the men are in the period of easy here and the women are here hallelujah so stop what stop why looking up yes we look up and pray unto him lift up your holy hands and pray unto him once you have prayed then there's time there's time for everything this is the time for you to look down and you see the beautiful ladies. Hallelujah. 
Nice gentlemen, they are when the PRWC. Don't go anywhere. Amen. Because you are not watching, that is why you are not seeing. I want to charge you going forward, learn how to walk, pray, of course. And after you have prayed, come down as a human being and then watch. And you will find the ladies. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So, number four, watch. Going forward, learn how to watch. And you find one. If you are not, your eyes are not good, see me. I can help you. I can help you. Amen. Then number five, whilst you are watching, we are still people of faith. Hallelujah. So don't take uh, the will of God out of, this, out, of, out of the equation. Jesus himself prayed and he said, let my will, but your will be done. Hallelujah. It is good to have your standards. It is good to have your preferences. It is good to have your parameters. Yeah, maybe you're looking for a tall man like me. Hallelujah. <laughs> a tall man like me with a six pack. Uh -huh. Maybe double degree, a PhD. Uh, he's taking about six figures every year. Yeah, handsome man like me. Yeah, there's nothing wrong setting that parameters. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. But let me tell you, at the end of the day, you are not going to marry this, uh, the, 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 you are going to marry a man, not what he has. Hallelujah. Whatever that he has is transient. It's, it's not permanent. One day it will not be there. Have you, not, have you never seen a rich man who has become a poor, before, a poor man before? You know, so if you marry that man because he was rich and now he is poor. And so whatever that you see around the man are not permanent. They can be there or they cannot be there. But what is more important is the man hallelujah so we marry a man and we marry a woman hallelujah that is why when you are praying you have to allow the will of god also to prevail amen oh i said amen the will of god allow the will of god to also prevail so it is good as i said if you were that is your standard you this is a kind of woman uh, you are looking for if you are a man, you are also looking for a beautiful lady, somebody who is very smart. As somebody, maybe you're looking for a curvy woman. There's nothing wrong with that. That is your taste. But at the same time, what is God saying? Amen. So for my man confessed, oh, he confessed. That said, honey, he was a young lady, young girl. Her prayer that is one day he will marry a white man. A white man. And God answered the prayer. The white one that he gave it is me. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, he said the standard all right. He was looking for a white man to marry him. And God said, I will give you a white man. And this is me. But he is always thanking God for bringing me into a life. Maybe he has not visited a visiting mission house. So if mommy will not say anything without ending, the, oh, thank my husband for me. He's a nice, wonderful man. And it is true. It is true. It is true. My young girls were able to tell me that we want a husband like you. Yeah. I've become their role model. Because they sat down and saw the way I am marrying their mom. Amen. Amen. So I'm saying that the will of God. Hallelujah. If it is the will of God, he will give you that curvy, smart woman. Fine. But if not, he gives you something else. That's the, his will. Hallelujah. The most important thing that that man will take care of you. He will love you to the end. Amen. So don't tie the hands of God by setting that high standard for yourself. You see, when uh, this man, God met uh, Zacchaeus, who was looking to see Jesus, you remember the story. The Bible said because he was too short and he couldn't penetrate, penetrate through the, the, the crowd. He went ahead of him, climbed the tree, sitting up there. When Jesus got to where he was, he said, Zacchaeus, oh, you are too high up there. Come down so that I will help you. Hallelujah. Some of the ladies need to come down because the help is here. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. You are over there too high. Even over above Jesus himself. Come down. Come down. 
your standards are maybe are too 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 high so please let's come down and believe that god will give you the best that you are looking for oh hallelujah oh i said hallelujah so that is number five number five is what give room for the will of god also to operate even as you are putting your trust in him and you are praying unto him his will must always prevail because he is the only one who can give you the best like adam confessed this is the bone of my bone this is the flesh of my flesh for god gave him a perfect woman to be his wife amen and i believe strongly god will do it likewise for you so number five uh allow give room for the will of god also then number six there are other biblical admonitions that you need to know or not to not to ignore second corinthians chapter 6 14 to 6 uh, 14 to 16 please if you can help me second corinthians 6 14 uh, through 16 second corinthians please yeah do not be bound together with unbelievers but what have what have partnership have righteousness and lawlessness and what fellowship has light with darkness 15 or what harmony has christ with belia or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever so in a nutshell what we are saying is that uh, there's always darkness and there's always light the two are incompatible what we are saying that if you're looking for a woman a man you are a christian christians must marry christians hallelujah now don't go and marry somebody who is a muslim somebody who profess a different faith or because probably is meeting some of your standard you are just causing problems for yourself so a christian must marry a christian so when you come oh this guy who is he i see a christian oh pastor he's not but i will try to convert him he who is standing must be careful that he doesn't fall before you become aware that person has converted you back to maybe another faith hallelujah so first and foremost is he a christian is he a god-fearing man hallelujah if you're able to do that then you find the right person for yourself then first first corinthians chapter 7 39 first corinthians 7 39 says first corinthians yes First Corinthians seven thirty nine, please. Okay, a wife is bound as long as her husband, her husband lives, but if the husband is dead, he is free to be married to whom he wish, wishes. Only in the Lord, Hallelujah. So, a Christian woman is supposed to marry a Christian uh, man, and likewise. A Christian man is supposed to marry a Christian man only in the Lord. You are bound, you are you are free. If you are unfortunately your husband dies or your wife dies, you have every right to marry once again, but only in the Lord. Amen. Then Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. For the men, please. Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Verse 30. An advice to all the men charm is deceitful and beauty is what vain but a woman who fears the lord she shall be praised hallelujah charm is deceitful beauty is nothing and it doesn't mean that when you are fortunate to have a beautiful wife uh, uh, let me put it this way all women are very beautiful hallelujah because beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Nobody can convince me. You can't that my wife is not beautiful. Yeah, to me, he's the most beautiful woman in the world. Maybe to someone else, he might be the ugliest woman. But it all lies here. The beholder, hallelujah. So let your wife be the most beautiful woman on earth. Hallelujah. So beauty is good is some some day I'm saying we don't want to depend on beauty. Everybody can be beautiful in your sight, and therefore, if you know the lady and his uh, what God fearing, 
gap hearing, please go ahead and the Lord will bless you. Amen. Then finally, Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Can two people walk unless they agree? The agreement must be there. Hallelujah. Compat compatibility uh, should be there. But above all things, let God lead you to the right person. Amen. So, ladies and gentlemen, the single among us, at least I've given you six guidelines to guide you as to how you can get Mr. Wright or Miss Wright. Then let me quickly, what's the time now? Okay, let me quickly go through. These are some of the challenges I've been facing and the people are asking me. So, you have found Mr. Wright. You have found Mr. Wright. The two of you agree. You want to proceed. Then what do I do? As a Christian, as a member of this church, sometimes... Uh, people make so many mistakes before they come to the presbytery or before they come to, uh, even they go to their parents. So let me begin by saying that marriage, be, marriage begins with two people. A husband, no, a boy or a man and a woman. Hallelujah. A man and then a woman. The two of them, they should agree or they must agree that they want to marry. In our culture, normally, it is the man who proposes to the woman. And once the proposal has been accepted, then the next thing that you need to do is one, you have to go to your parents and inform them of your intention. We want, if you want to marry, it's something which is very good. And every parent is excited when his son or his, uh, his daughter wants to marry. Likewise, the church is also, is also so excited. If we, it comes to our knowledge, there are some of you, a boy, and a, hey, let me say, a woman, and then uh, a man have decided to marry. We are so excited. So don't hide it from us. Let us know as quickly as possible. Hallelujah. So inform your parents because you need their blessings. If they raise concern, please have patience for them. Because they know you much better. They have more experience than you. They have more discerning than you do. Hallelujah. So when they raise objection, don't fight with them. Just understand them. If it is from the Lord, it will definitely stand. Hallelujah. Even by, by raising the objection, it gives more time to spend, uh, to, to more time to pray. Hallelujah. So don't fight with them. My parent doesn't want me. No. My parent or my parent don't want me. No. We want you to marry, but we want to make sure that you don't make a mistake. So don't fight with them. Understand them. Have patience with them. Spend time more praying. If you know, uh, talk to them. If they are not yielding, if you know a, a, a family friend, you can talk to them. Go and talk to my dad or go and talk to my mom. If it's not working, come to the church. Talk to the elders. We will find, we will find a way of meeting your parents. If it doesn't work, come and talk to your pastor. Hallelujah. By going through this process, if it is from the Lord, the Lord might... The Lord might Attach the hearts of the people, your parents, and they will be convinced and then also give their blessings to what we are going to do. Amen. So inform your parents. Don't fight with them if they raise any objections. Then number two, you belong to original family and if you are a Christian, you also belong to God's family. So every one of us here belongs to two families. Original family and God's family. And as I said, the two families are so excited to see you getting into marriage. And therefore, don't hide it from the family. At the same time, don't hide it from, God, from God's family. Hallelujah. Because you need the support of the two. Your original family and then the church family. Amen. So inform uh, your presiding elder. Let me know. As quickly as possible. Once you receive the blessing of your parents, yes, let the church also know. Because we need time to prepare for your marriage. Hallelujah. So inform the presiding elder as quickly as possible. The presiding elder will inform the pastor. Sometimes people come to me, they inform me, yes, I understand because I consider myself as your spiritual dad. When you come to me, I will thank you, I appreciate what you've done, but I will refer you back to the presiding elder because there's a process that you need to go through. Amen. Oh, I said amen. I am teaching you so that you don't make the mistakes some people have already made. Uh -huh. So you inform the presiding elder. We started out with the presbytery, and then they will refer you to the marriage committee, one of the best committees in the church. 
Some people don't want to go to the marriage committee. It is the best. Hallelujah. You go there and you see, you meet Elder Walker, very experienced man, man of God, and his committee. They will do their best to protect you. So the very committee is there to support you. Hallelujah. Especially when you are bringing a guy, a woman from somewhere that we don't know. They will do the, the background check for us. Amen. To make sure that that boy or that girl or that, that man, uh, he, maybe he has a wife in Ghana, he has made every effort to bring the woman down and it's not working and therefore you want to sneak out and come and marry you. So that before you become aware, you have become a second wife. Uh -huh. Maybe you have become a, a second husband. I have seen it before. Uh -huh. So they are there to scrutinize, to vet, they vet, to take you through vetting, to make sure that everything is perfect. Hallelujah. So they are helping you, and at the same time, they are helping the church. The committee is helping the church because in this land, it is, it is against the laws of the land uh, to practice polygamy. Uh, polygamy, yes. If you are a pastor and you officiate a polygamous, marriage you can go to jail so they want to protect the pastor as well and protect it so nobody, nobody will have the chance to come and see with the church so they are there to do a very wonderful job when they go there they are very nice people be open to them they will ask questions answer the question to the best of your ability if you don't know the answer fine but we have to cooperate with them because once we have done with them then the president that will once again will inform you officially and then they will hand you, you over the corpus over to me to take you through a period of counseling according to our practice we are supposed to take take you through a counseling for six months the reason being that we cannot meet every day maybe meet once a week uh -huh. that is why it's very long but i want to make sure that you are received it. the necessary counseling that we need so that we can be very sure that when you enter into your marriage you are going to enjoy your marriage hallelujah so don't run away from the, uh, the marriage committee but rather cooperate with them and they will also do their best uh, to support you so that you can have a wonderful woman that you want to uh, want to marry to and then it is the parents who are supposed to perform the customary rights it is not the church so the parents once uh, the marriage committee is through and your parents are also satisfied or the family is satisfied then they will find time they will set a date for the customer right which you call the engagement before the wedding the engagement must take or the customer rights must take place before the wedding also can take place because the church comes in to put their blessings on what the family has done that is why we always insist we want to have a proof that indeed the customer has taken place and again even on wedding day we want to ask your dad to find out if indeed the customer right has been, been performed before we can proceed with the with the wedding so this is how everything should be done if you are able to go through this then it means that you have the cooperation of your family and you also have the cooperation of the church family and you can have a wonderful wedding if you want to if you choose to then you can also you can also be confident be sure that indeed you are going to have uh, a peaceful enjoyable marriage amen so once this is done then the two of you are going to live together as family two member family so living together as husband and wife will be another story for another time in the interest of time amen amen for well, that one is very long i need to do i need, I need to have time but i think presiding with your permission we'll come back once again maybe not in september we'll find time because this series i want to make sure that i complete it so that you have the whole story and the whole resource that you need for you to be able to get into a marriage and do it and do it right and you have peace the church also have its own peace amen so 10 minutes or five minutes if you have any question for what we have covered so far please we can ask and then we will pray please can i do that for can i go ahead okay thank you yeah he's the man the authority here hallelujah i have to respect his authority so you have a question for me please yes 
Venisa. Yes. Give a microphone for me. Make sure you ask me a question that I can answer. <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> um, so you said, I want to stand. Yeah, I want to see you. All right. I said, go ahead. Uh -huh. Okay. You said that um, it's important that we marry someone who is also a Christian, and they have to be a Christian. But my question is, um, what if you are the catalyst for someone who is not a Christian, and by that marriage, you're able to bring them into no, Christianity? Say that if, yeah. So you said that you have to be married, you have to get married to someone who is already a Christian. Yes. And I'm saying, what if you meet someone who is not a Christian, but you become the catalyst to bring them into Christianity? Or you want to lead a person? What if the person isn't a Christian, but what if you meet him and because of your relationship with God, they feel like, oh, you know what? Maybe this is something that I want to also be a part of. Maybe this is a relationship I also want with God. And they build their own relationship. Don't you feel like we're losing a whole demographic of people just because they're not Christian? No, I, I'm not getting your word. You don't get it? Yeah. <laughs> take, take your time and then... Mm -hmm. <laughs> The person Why? is not a Christian. I speaking slow. But because okay. of you. Okay, one more time. One Be more time. Okay, take your time. One more time. Mm -hmm. Let's say I meet someone. Mm -hmm. He is not a Christian. He's not a Christian, number one. Uh -huh. Correct. Number two. But you said that we should be with someone who is a Christian. Yes. I'm saying, what if because I'm in a relationship with that person who is not a Christian, he... I'm, I'm the catalyst or I'm the, the reason that brings him into the church so he can build a relationship with God. So in a sense, I brought him into Christianity. So I'm saying your earlier statement eliminates a good portion of individuals because they may not already be a Christian. Okay, so if I understand your question very well. Number one, uh, you are a Christian. The guy is not a Christian. Number two, they are already in two relationships. And then you have come to know that you're supposed to marry a Christian. So now you want to bring the person or uh, preach the gospel to him so the person can be converted to become a Christian so that you can continue with the relationship. I'm saying that's a possibility, yes. Yes, okay. That possibility is there. The unfortunate thing is that the relationship already started before the person becomes a Christian. Under normal circumstances, under normal circumstances, which I want to advise you all of you, if you have not started any relationship and you want to start a relationship, make sure the person is a Christian. Okay, it is true that you can bring the person into Christianity. But who knows? Who knows? If he indeed genuinely wants to become a Christian, not, not because he wants to marry you. Sometimes people can be very pretentious. People can be very tricky people can be very deceptive because you are a nice woman very sharp uh, smart lady mm -hmm. he wants to marry you at all costs so he will pretend that he's a christian and then get you as a wife then once you go out there to live together husband and wife then you will see the real person that you have married that he became a christian quote unquote all because of you so but. if i were you this is what i would do if indeed you have expressed interest in me or the religion has been developed, I will bring you to the church all right. But I will give myself some time to make sure that first and foremost, uh, first and foremost his commitment is to Christ. Number one, see that he has become a God-fearing person. He is here not because of you, but he is here because he wants to become a Christian and serve Christ throughout his life. Uh -huh. Once you see that, that we can be confident that this man has become a God-fearing. So whether, you or not, whether he marries you or not, he's still a Christian. But if he's marrying you simply because uh, you are saying that come and become a Christian person, the possibility that you'll be deceived down the road is always there. No. Okay. Why no? Because you can say you're a Christian at any point in time. Like, you can say you're a Christian. I can say I'm a Christian. You, no one in this room would be able to confirm that or deny it. It's based on my personal relationship with God if I find myself as a Christian. So just because that person tells me he's a Christian, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's fact. 
So the same thing could be applicable to someone who is not a Christian. Maybe there is something that happens in that relationship that helps bring him closer to God. I don't think it's fair that I'm eliminating him as a possibility as a partner because he doesn't already know that he's a hardcore Christian. There are Christians here who are already wavy in their faith. So I think it could go both ways. Yeah, but we want to go by what the word of God says. Light and darkness have nothing in common. So if you are not into any relationship and you want to enter into a relationship, I will please advise you to abide by the word of God. Because it's there for a reason. We have seen it before and uh, we, don't want to ha- we don't want it to happen to any of you, especially the ladies, please. Uh-huh. So the word of God says, darkness and light, has not, they have nothing in common. So if you want to marry, go ahead and marry, but only in the Lord. This is the word of God. So if you want to bypass the word of God and do your own thing, then you must be prepared to face the consequences of your own, of your own actions. So I've seen it before, because I've seen some men who are, who are behaving the way that you are describing, and eventually they show their true colors. And it wasn't a, a good thing to observe. So please, uh, I would advise you. Okay. Yeah, Pastor, uh, let me reiterate what she said and then give you an example. It is true the Bible says light and darkness cannot comprehend. But then we also know for a fact that there are some light and light in the church that are more fireable than light and darkness. And so I can understand where she's coming from. Now, in a situation where I am a Christian, you are a Christian, and then I married a Christian, under the umbrella of Christian, but then there is so much fire in the house. It is more worse than, and I've seen also somebody who's not a Christian, marries a Christian, becomes a Christian, they live so happily ever after. The only thing the person didn't have was a title as a Christian, but he or she was more genuine than those of us who call ourselves Christians. So when we put that there, it becomes a limitation. Yeah, you, you, you are clapping for him. <laughs> oh, because, but somebody has also regretted for not listening to what the word of, what the word of God says. Where there is fire between light and light, it is easily, easily it, that fire is easily quenchable. Let me trust me. Because when two people, my married couples from this church, they have issues and we sit them down, we are able to find solution to their problem as quickly as possible because we know that they are Christians and therefore we can stand on the word of God. You know, the word of God also carries authority. So, me as a, as a pastor who knows the word, I will not advise you something against what the Bible teaches. The Bible said, this is what the Bible said. The Bible said that Christians must marry Christians. It is there for a reason. So please, uh, don't fall into that trap if you are not into any relationship. If already you are into a relationship, please come and see me. Come and see me. If already, uh, I, won't do, I wouldn't say it's a mistake. If already committed to yourself, please come. Let's sit down and see how best... We can, if it is possible, to rectify the situation. Amen. Okay, is it Fusa or Fina? Fina, okay. Fina. Yeah, Pastor, um, to answer Vanessa's question, I'll try my best. Um, I agree with Pastor because, like he said, you can have a preference, but you definitely have to take it to God. You can't, you know, especially if you're in a relationship with a non-believer, your heart is already in it, and then you take it to God. How is God supposed to help you? You get what I'm saying? But if you're not in a relationship and you're interested in a, in a non-believer, take it to God first and see if it's his will. Because if it's not his will and you end up marrying the person, women, we have like the thought that we can change a man. But we can't. He can only change if he wants to and if God decides to. So if you go and marry an unbeliever and it's not from the will of God, it's different if it's God's will. If it's God's will, then it'll happen. But if it's not God's will and... 
Yes, okay. non-believer. But the thing, the whole point is, take it to God. Take it to God first. Yeah. It's it's not that. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, it's not about the title. It's not about eliminating anybody. I don't know if some people carry the title of a Christian and they are not Christians. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. So. Okay. In the interest of time, please. In the interest of time. Who is that person? Sister Mary, if you can be yeah. very brief with me because we're supposed to close at okay. 11. I think we want to stick with the scripture that Pastor gave us. And that is from the Genesis 24, 12. Then he prayed, Lord God, my master, Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master, Abraham. And God answered the prayer. So as long as you have prayed to your God, like you said, somebody can come in and pretend to be a Christian and they are not. We can read minds. Only God reads minds and heart. So as long as you have committed to God's sense and prayed and received your confirmation that this is him, hallelujah to God. But if it's not, remember though, the fact that some individuals are not Christians and they are marrying successfully, remember because they're doing something that God created and they receive blessings. But is that how God wants it? The two million question is, the Bible is our manual. Let's go by what the Bible says, and God's name will be glorified. Amen. Amen. So, we will, okay. I will discuss with President Nader and see what we can do on the 25th. I will discuss with him. Amen. But meanwhile, the conclusion is that marriage is God's idea. And he has his own rules and regulations governing it. If you want to marry, please marry God's way. Hallelujah. Marry God's way. Then you can be confident you have the support of God himself. Amen. God bless you. Shall please be on our feet. We will spend more time praying on the 25th, the last Sunday of the month. So this morning, I want to, first of all, thank God for the insights, knowledge he has given unto us. God has added to our knowledge, and therefore we want to thank him, we want to ascribe glory and honor unto him. So wherever you are, please just lift your hands and begin to thank God for the opportunity given to, to come to church this morning. And I want to believe that God has ministered to you, you have, you have seen, he has revealed himself to you, even his word. Just thank God for the, for the fact that you are in, in his presence this very moment. Let us pray, please. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Shandoru Baneke. Glory. Glory. Shandoru Baba. Indiri Bidi. Yandara Baba. Glory. Shandiri Bibi. Yandara Baba. In the name of Jesus. Glory. Shandoru Baba. Indiri Bidi. Yandara Baba. Indiri Yandara Baba. Yandara Baba. Indiri Bidi. In Jesus' name. Want to pray if you are a single, if single person, you're looking for a wife, looking for a husband. God has given us the ways how to go about it. So I want you to pray. Let us pray for all the singles among us that God will lead them to the right person, the right wife, the right, uh, the right, the right woman, and the right man. So let us pray for all the singles among us, even as they are waiting on God. God should be. Uh, God, they should experience the faithfulness of God. Let us pray for all the singles among us in the name of Jesus. Yende yandara baba bane yende bede yanduru baba ba yende yende bede yanduru baba ne in the name of Jesus and finally we want to pray for all married couples in our midst since the days of uh, Adam and Eve married couples have encountered challenges and problems so we want to pray that God will help us whenever there are challenges you give the wisdom and the grace to be able to maneuver. Uh, to come through successfully without thinking of, of, of divorce. Let us pray, committing all married couples with your hands. As for God blesses upon your mind, because he said, 
be fruitful and multiply. God pronounce his blessings on married couples. So pray, pray for his blessings on your marriage. In the name of Jesus. Yandoruba Kurushende, Yandara Baba, Yandara Baba, in the name of Jesus, Shandoruba Ba, Lurushende, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, please be seated. Thank you, Father in heaven. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for revealing yourself to us in your word. We pray that you give it the grace that we not be just here as for your word to deceive ourselves, but rather we put your word into practice there and then. We shall attract blessings from you. May your name alone be glorified now and forevermore. Amen. Hello, everyone. Would you like to make a generous donation to the Church of Pentecost USA? If so, let me guide you through a few steps to make it possible. First, if you're an iPhone user or have iOS, go to the App Store. And for Android users, it will be Play Store. Search and download My COP app. On the app, find the Gift tab and select your designated assembly, like the Dallas Assembly. You will be taken to a secure page. And on there, you can give any amount you would like. Make sure to put in your personal information for verification purposes. And finally, select Give to make your donation. If you have any questions on how to work the app, please contact any of the church officials. Thank you. If you are finding the MyCOP app difficult, you can cash up your tithes and offerings. Cash up your tithes and offering to dollar sign PIWC Dallas. That again is dollar sign PIWC Dallas. God bless you. Shall we please be on our feet? We bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the lord we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of oh we bring sacrifice we, we bring, bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the lord we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the lord as we offer unto you a sacrifice is a thanksgiving as we offer unto you a sacrifice is a thanksgiving as we offer unto you a sacrifice is a thanksgiving as we offer unto you a sacrifice is a thanksgiving we bring sacrifice we bring sacrifice of praise into the heart we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of God. We offer as we offer unto you a sacrifice of thanksgiving. We offer unto you a sacrifice of we offer as we offer unto you a sacrifice we offer unto you a sacrifice. Oh, you are king. You are king of kings. You are Lord. You are Lord of Lords. At the mention of your name, every knee must bow. At the mention of your name. Every knee must bow. 
your name. I have to mention of your name. Every song, every song confess. I have to mention of your name. I have to mention of your name. Every knee, every knee must bow. I have to mention of your name. Every song Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. We are here to, as part of the service this morning, this morning we want to uh, seize the opportunity and then perform a christening for one of the members God has added to PRWC family. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I want to thank God for what he has done for our brother and his wife. And uh, what we are going to do is very, very important because uh, God himself shows interest in naming or names. So Genesis chapter 2, as you read, if you listen very carefully, 2.19 says, Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the sky and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called a living creature, that was it. That was his name hallelujah so the ability uh, the authority uh, to perform names so give names the god's creature has been given to man and this one i want to stand on that authority and uh, perform that naming ceremony for our young sister who has been praying and praying waiting for this day hallelujah and today god has answered her prayer he's going to officially uh, have her name but i want to say i will say this and i want to repeat this morning that your name will uplift will outlive you hallelujah one day you will die but this name your name will remain you have to be very careful the way you use your name and to do certain things because it will be out there even when you are not there so that's my advice to all people advice to all people. One day I will not be here as your pastor, but people will still mention my name. Whether I do good or bad things, people will mention them. Hallelujah. So we want to pray. Uh, we want to pray. We want to ask God to help each and every one of us, especially the elders, all of us who have names. Make sure when people uh, when people mention your name, what are they going to say? Adam Fujo. What will it? Amen. So God help, God help us. Amen. So what we are going to do is so biblical. We will point back according to Luke chapter 2. When Jesus was born at the age of at the day 8, family members met together as we have met this morning. And then officially the name given to Jesus uh, by the angel was publicly announced. And going forward from that time, people began to call him Jesus. Amen. So this day, today we have met as a family. We're going to officially name our child and then the name is going to be a name here and we know very sure we are very sure that he will she will give her life to christ look at the way he's looking at me <laughs> yeah he will give his life uh, sorry her life to christ and this name same name will be written in the Lamb's book of life so names are very very important and thank god for taking some time especially those loved ones family members who are here to support what we are going to do he is asking me to tell you that he appreciates very much and when he grows up one day he will come to your house and say thank you amen so according to the parents after they have sought the peace of god they want to yeah mom and dad have sought the peace of god uh, our brother sylvester john is the dad and then our sister Leslie Jan is also the mother. Mother, okay. Okay, so uh, the child was born May 30th, 2020. Oh, you are see 2020 here. So I was wondering, I've been waiting for two years. Amen. 2022. Uh, so it's about how many months now? So the name, I want a dad how to pronounce the name, the president for me. Samia, okay, I don't want to get it right. It was wrong, sorry. 
Samia Ajua Ofebia Jan is going to be a name. Amen. So please, we want to invite the couples, mom and dad, please come forward. Amen. So, you the reason why I'm going to take the child from your hand. You the reason why I'm going to take the child from your hand. The reason why I'm going to take the child from your hand. Why? <laughs> it's not to bless her. Yeah, we bless her, all right. But I'm doing that because you have greater responsibility as the head of the home. So, from you and then to your wife. Amen. So we are here, we want everybody to participate in what you are going to do. So please, if you wouldn't mind, with all humility, let's be on our feet. Even as we are lifting up the name unto heaven, we want God to shower his blessings on the name. Because I've said that names are very important. We want to pray that whatever this name is mentioned, people will have the cause, the reason to bless the name of God. for blessing the family, the church, the land called America. He's such an awesome, awesome girl. I know God is going to use him, use her for a very special people because he's the unique among our people here. So we want to pray that the purpose and intentions of God for your life will be realized in his own glory. Amen. So the name has been mentioned to you, Samia. Samia, the exalted prayer. Is it the meaning of the name? Oh, thank you. Thank you. So Adua Ophelia Jan. Shall we pray? Asking God to shower his blessings on the name. Asking God to protect her. Asking God that this name that will uplift her will be a glorious, blessed name. In all places that she, he goes, people will see her and say, Lord, thank you for blessing the world with such a wonderful, awesome baby girl. In the name of Jesus. Please, I'm praying. I'm doing two things. We perform the Christian, and after that, we also dedicate her into the hands of God. Amen. Shall we pray, please? Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand before your presence as your people, as a family, as a children. We want to say, Lord, thank you for what you have done. You alone did what we are saying. Therefore, this morning, we want to ascribe all glory and honor unto you. For the protection that you gave to our sister, even this Naman's journey. Thank you for the fact that you were, you were with her. You did not forsake her, but rather through thick and thin, ups, ups and downs. Lord, you manifest your faithfulness unto her. That is why we are seeing what we are seeing. And therefore, we want to say, Lord, take all the glory. Because you alone did what you did. And therefore, may your name be, may your name be glorified. And may your name be exalted. I want to bless your name for this child. Ever since that he came to even this sinful world, she has enjoyed your divine protection. That is why today he has been able to come to church. Father, we don't want to overlook what you have done for the child as well. I want to say, Lord, thank you. Again, I want to thank you as a congregation for putting love in our mouth. We are here not mourning, but rather we are joyful and we are celebrating what you have done. Every good and perfect thing emanates from you. And therefore, once again, we Lord, we Lord, we want to say thank you. I stand here as your servant and the authority given to me. I declare publicly that going forward, this child that you have blessed the family with and the church will be, should be called or will be called Samia, Adua, Ophelia, Jean. Listen to your name, don't cry. <laughs> Amen. Your name is Samia Ajua Opebia Jan. That is your name. People of God have prayed and have sanctified this name. 
and therefore even as you are going to be called this name back where wherever you went wherever you will go may the almighty god the god of all flesh can be with you even as we are carrying this sanctified name with you we pray that god will be with you in all things again i stand here as the servant of god and dedicate you into the hands of god jesus who are the level of, of little children the other time you said we should not hinder, put any hindrance in their, in their path but they should freely come to you because you love little ones unto your mighty and able hands oh lord i present this child or to our dedicated child unto you we pray that your divine protection will be her portion you will guide her lead her in whatever that he does we pray that your presence your presence alone will be upon her life throughout her life on this earth we pray that your peace that the price of human comprehension will also be with her we pray that because it's a unique person and given to us in this world we pray that that uniqueness will be seen in all places among her peers wherever he goes let that uniqueness see and be, be seen we pray that whatever that you have said concerning her life that be realized will be fulfilled to your own glory we build a hedge around her with the fire of the holy spirit to no know even even plan of the enemy will be able to penetrate we pray that your presence will be a good aura upon her and that will even throw fear onto her enemies we pray that you will grow and grow to know you jesus as the savior of the world we pray that you will not become a lost child, but rather you find a place in your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray that because he's a member of this family, and he's going to play a unique role in this church, we pray, we pray that you become one of the pillars of the church. You will follow the footsteps of the father and the mother, and again, be a useful person to the family, useful person to the, to the church, and a useful person to this town. Above all, hide the earth from the schemes and the plots of the enemy. I pray that whatever that you have brought here onto this earth will be seen and be realized to your own glory. Once again, until you are able and dedicated to the powerful hand, we dedicate this child. May the Almighty God, the God of all flesh, the God of your father and your mother, who also has become your father, even the, uh, your God this morning, may he be with you. May he bless you. May he keep you. May his presence go with you wherever you find yourself. And above all, you are serving a God, your parents are serving a God, the God of all peace. May his peace, who surpass all comprehension, be with you. Samia, we pray that God will keep you and bless you. Ajua, we pray that God will lead us countenance upon you and be gracious unto you wherever you go. We pray, we pray, we pray that God, who is the God of peace, his peace that surpasses all human comprehension, once again, about with your body, soul, and spirit, now and forevermore. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn and face the congregation. Amen. Oh, amen. So, people of God, loved ones who came to support our beautiful lady, I have the singular one now and officially to introduce to you our youngest sister in the house, the newest member of the house, our sister, Samia, the exalted praise, uh, Ajua Ofer Pia. John. Amen. Amen. So, this morning, we have been officially accepted into PIWC family. Amen. That is why we are presenting this certificate. Certificate to testify that indeed she is a member. Hallelujah. And therefore, he has every right to enjoy all the privileges members enjoy in this house and he's our child and therefore we have a huge responsibility uh, with the family to make sure that she grows up to become first and foremost a Christian and they're not just a Christian very active Christian who play a very active role in this church I know for sure that the parents will do their part 
and as a church who also do our part. So once again, thank you. God bless you for coming. And then if you, if you don't have any home church, I want to recommend PRWC to you. Hallelujah. One, if it's not the best, one of the best. Amen. So at this juncture, I want to. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. We want to invite family members who are here just because of the christening and dedication. So please come even, even as they are rendering their thanks to Almighty God for what He has done for them. Amen. I didn't know we had a big old family like this. <laughs> uh, uh, quick and short. Uh, first of all, we want to say big, big love and thanks to uh, God for making this day possible. Uh, uh, secondly, we want to want to thank uh, our family. Uh, they been with us from the from the beginning and still being with us. Uh, though sometimes. They give us a hard time, but they're still with us. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, thirdly, we want to uh, thank the church for uh, uh, being with us too, uh, checking on us from daily. And if I say church, I mean you guys, which which is another second family. Uh, you guys been checking on us uh, from the day one. Hey, how you guys doing? How the baby doing? No. The only word come from my mouth, hey, Charlie, we did. We good. So, uh, we want to say thank you guys for the love that you guys show us. And uh, uh, another thank you goes to this beautiful lady right here. She's very shy, but I'll bring her out. Uh, Auntie Amelia. <laughs> uh, she, 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 she she's good she's good yeah <laughs> all the words all the words come to she's good and very loving so we want to say a big thank you to uh and this <laughs> see they're still checking up on me okay uh and uh let me let me say a little few things that we we had to go through a little bit uh we was in a transition of moving so you know, nowadays everybody is trying to move into a new house. So we was was in process, you know, moving. And uh, so the day that we had our key to a new house was is the second. Was it was that, like the second day, right? So the second day, and, and she she was like, "Hey, I want to come out." So imagine the stress we had to go through the same same week, actually the same day, moving and. Baby, baby coming out the same time. I thought I was the one that was pregnant, but it wasn't me. So, <laughs> so uh, thank you, family. Thank you, church. Thanks, everyone, and the lovely people that came with us. Thank you all. God bless. You want to say so? We give all the glory to God. Amen. And as a family, we know what we normally do. When Jesus was born, we found out that the wise men came in 
and presented a gift to uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, a name has been named this morning. We have a new member. We're going to place the bow here. And then whatever you have to bless the child. So that at the end of the day, there will be something in an account for our sister Samir. So just come out from your heart and just come and donate something to our child. We'll place the bow here and then we will sing a song, please. Let's just sing a song and then come and bring USA PIWC Dallas presents Zoom online Bible study. Listen every Wednesday at 7 30 p.m. to 9 p.m. The meet of Ori Amanfo or Elder Prince in Fujo for more information. 
IWC Dallas presents in-person prayer service this and every Friday at 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. For more information, you may contact Reverend Ofori Amanfo or Elder Dr. Prince Infojo for more information. PIWC Men's Ministry, in collaboration with the Women's and Evangelism Ministries, presents the PIWC Fall Bash. This is a day of barbecue and other foods, games and activities on Saturday, October 1st, 2022. There will be games like basketball, ping pong, darts, etc. The other activities include a bounce house, face painting, and balloon animal arts for the kids. Beloved, start praying and preparing for a day of fun, fellowship, and evangelism. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. In addition to the previous announcements, I have a few additional announcements. This week is Evangelism Week, and there'll be programs each day throughout the week. On Monday, we'll be on the district level with Miracle Service focused on evangelism. Tuesday, will be on the national level. Wednesday, will be on the regional level. Thursday, will be on the district level and Friday and Sunday will be here on the local level at PIWC. On Saturday, we'll be participating in outreach, which is Abilene for Christ. We are encouraging all members who are available to join us as we win souls for Christ in Abilene. Amen. Security. If you are interested in joining the security team, please kindly reach out to Deacon Frank for more details. First time visitors. We would like to welcome all first-time visitors here to PIWC. PIWC is a family church and would like to get to know who you are. So if you're here visiting for the first time, apart from the friends and loved ones that came to support the baby's dedication, if you could kindly know who you are by a raise of hand. Amen. Amen. If you could kindly just be on your feet and come up to the front so we could get to know you better. Just your name, where you're from. Come on up so we can introduce yourself. God bless you. God bless you both. And just right up here so we can see your face and just introduce yourself. Let us know who you are. Uh, me and the partner boy, uh, I am the Elder Daniel, and I am the Elder I was invited by the pastor, the pastor's house. I'm a man of my word. Uh, my name is Benjamin Warner. Uh, I was the other one. The church on the other side. Yeah, I was I was over there and uh, I decided to come here. I moved from Kansas to here. Uh, yeah, here yeah, for two. In addition to that, if you are also here for the very first time, you know you haven't accepted the Lord as your personal Savior, this is an opportune time for you. Yes, at this time, probably you came to church and you said, today I'm going to accept the Lord and ask Him to come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. The Bible says it is with the heart that we believe and with the mouth that we confess into salvation. So if you are here, please make a decision today before you leave this morning. Amen. And we all want to bless every one of you who contributed and brought a gift to our newborn baby, a new member, Samir, into a PIWC. Your friends, family members, and all your brethren here have contributed something for you. 
for Samia. I know she's listening to me and she, she hears it. So we're going to present this to you, not to you per se, but to the child. Now what we always say, open an account and then as you build it up, the time will come. You know, there are certain times sometimes we receive checks from IRS and all that, but we spend it. Yeah, but it's not going to be like that this time. Shall we just we present it to the lady first? Let's present to the lady. Because men, we, we like to spend certain times so much. Yeah, yes. So, from your church members and the brethren, we present this to you, to Samia. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please forgive our time today. This is the normal time that we close. We usually close at 11.30. But you bear that the, the question and answers after the, the word of God and then also the naming ceremony has caused us to go uh, a little beyond our time. Forgive us. Uh, next time you come, it will be like this. It will be at 11.30. God bless you. I believe that you have been blessed this morning and we want to pray that you continue to come and you continue to be blessed even as you worship with us. Amen. I want to re-emphasize the announcement concerning this week, which is about Evangelism Week. The Evangelism Week. We all have a role to play. We have been commissioned to go out there and make disciples of all nations. So I want to encourage you that this week, make it a part of your life this week, that you reach out to somebody with the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. I also want to encourage you that be a part of all the week activities that is going to be taking place from Monday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you cannot make it all, at least find one or two of them and be part of it. And your life will never be the same. Amen. Saturday is Abilin for Christ, an outreach program in Abilin. As many of us have the opportunity and available, we encourage you that be part of this and God who rewards those who diligently seek him will reward you for your labor in his vineyard. Amen. The details of the Abilene program will be, will be sent out uh, during the week. And so be on the lookout for it and make yourself available. That will be on our feet, even as we bring the service morning. Our gracious Father, we want to thank you for this morning. We came unto you, the God of all flesh, and you have not forsaken us. You have fed our hungry soul. You have quenched our teeth with your word. We have had fellowship with you this morning. And we want to thank you for the favor and the opportunity that you gave unto us. As we depart this gathering, oh God, we ask that you continue to be with us. May your presence continue to guide and direct our path. May you lead us beside the still waters throughout this week and the days ahead of us. May you refresh our soul. May you deliver us from the snare of our adversaries, O God. And may your peace that passeth all understanding of men be our portion. May your grace abound unto us. I want to thank you, O God, for this day. I want to thank you for every life, O God, that came into your presence this morning. We pray that, Lord, may you continue to show us love, mercy, and kindness. And may you lead us through the storms of this life. May we experience your power and your mind. May you guide us and direct our path now and forever in Jesus' name. Now I want to ask our pastor to give us the benediction. Let me recognize you now once again for your praises. God bless you. Amen. Shall we receive benediction from the hands of God? Now may the Almighty God bless you and keep you. May he lift his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace because he is the Prince of Peace. Please go home in the purpose peace of God until we meet again in the name of the Father, Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.